Hello, I'm Rodney Anonymous. I've produced thousands of albums, I've played with hundreds of bands, and I was once the roadie for none other than Haircut 100. These are tales from my brilliant career in music. Episode 2, Working with Michael Jackson. So, in the summer of 1987, I'm in my mid to late 40s, and I am at the pinnacle of my career. Uh, because I had just done the score for a little movie about pirates that came out. That's right, a certain swashbuckling adventure known as Cutthroat Island. Yeah, I did the music for that. You left the theater humming my tunes. So, because of Cutthroat Island, my phone was ringing off the hook all that summer. Everybody, everybody wanted to get a piece of me. They wanted to have me come in and, and you know, twiddle the knobs on everything. And it was an exciting time. So, one day I'm home and my phone rings and it's this guy and he says his name is Quincy Jones. So, I just start ripping into him immediately. I'm like, you dumb son of a bitch, you irresponsible bastard. How could you have an episode where a guy gets stabbed at a punk rock show with an ice pick? That's really stupid. People are going to get hurt. And then this went on for about a half an hour. Um, and then finally, uh, Quincy Jones explained to me that Quincy Jones and Quincy the TV show are two completely separate entities. Who knew? I had no idea. So anyway, uh, he says to me, hey, look, I've been working with Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson has, he's, he's seen Cutthroat Island. And he is, he's over the moon. He, he loves the score you did for it. He'd like to work with you uh, on a project he's working on for Disney World called Captain EO. So, you know, are, are you doing anything on Friday? So I'm like, well, on Friday, I'm going downtown to bid on a Titan missile. Because I am a firm believer in the Second Amendment. And I want to get me a, a Titan missile. Um, and I got, I, I got outbid once before by Cher. I, I need to get one. So Quincy Jones, he says to me, he says, Hey, you know, um, if you work with Michael Jackson, money will be the least of your problems. And he was not wrong. So anyway, he gives me the address to Michael Jackson's house. I write it down. This is pre-internet. We had to write things down. Uh, I get it uh, the, like that Friday. Instead of going to bid on the missile, I get in my car. And my gremlin, and I drive on out to, to Michael's house. Now, you may not know this, but Michael, like a Scooby-Doo villain, lived in like an abandoned amusement park. I'm not kidding. This is a real thing. I'm not, this actually happened. You can see it from the highway. You can see like Ferris wheels and, and, and all sorts of bouncy castles and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, like I, I should put it in reverse, you know? So I pull up to the guard shack, and the guard's sitting in there, and because it looks like an amusement park, you know, I'm like, hey, one adult, please. And the guard says, adult, that's a word we don't hear a lot around here. So I'm thinking, yeah, again, should have popped it in reverse. Should have got the hell out of there, but it didn't. So uh, I drive past, like I say, uh, the petting zoo, which I thought I thought was a farm at first. I thought he had a farm. I didn't know what a petting zoo was in 87. I'm, and, and, and I'm sure Michael's concept of a petting zoo might have been different. But I go past the petting zoo. I go past. They had a thing. It was weird. They had a giant milk carton. And they would flash a picture of the child of the day on it. I'll never forget that. That was kind of creepy. So I get up to the main house. right? And, you know, I ring the buzzer. And Quincy answers the door and says, let me show you in uh, to. And this is Quincy, the producer, not Jack Clubman. All right, just want to make that clear. Uh, so, uh, so he says, I want to show you, you know, we'll take you down to the studio. Mike got a studio in his house, and, and we'll go down there. So I go down to the studio, all right, and, and there's Michael sitting, sitting at the board. And hand to God, all right, true, sitting in the engineer chair is a goddamn chimpanzee. I'm not kidding. There's a chimpanzee sitting there. So, so. Uh, Quincy says, you know, Mr. Jackson, this is Rodney Anonymous, and he's the man who did the score uh, to that film you love, Cutthroat Island. And, and Michael's just like, Cutthroat Island? And he turns around and goes, I'm Michael Jackson. And then he points to the chimp and he goes, and this is Troubles. He's the twin brother of my other chimp, Bubbles. And I'm like, oh, okay, that, that, that's not good. So uh, let me tell you something about Troubles. Troubles the chimp, okay? Troubles the chimp did not look happy. Troubles, he had like the mange, he had like bald patches, and he had this weird thousand yard stare. That chimp 
had seen some shit, okay? So I'm trying to make things, you know, add a little levity to the situation. So I say, well, you know what they say. They say, never work with kids or animals. No, should not have said that, okay? Because Michael, he kind of, he just starts getting all weird. He's like, who said that? Who said, whoever said that was ignorant. And if you believe it, you're ignorant. You're ignorant. You're ignorant, Mr. Anonymous. And then he points over to Quincy Jones. He goes, you're ignorant, Quincy Jones. You're not, you're not, you're not even a doctor like the real Quincy. You're ignorant. And then he looks at Troubles and he says, and Troubles, you're the most ignorant of all. And I don't know, I, I have no idea what that set off in Troubles, okay? But the next thing I hear is like, Troubles, no! And Troubles the chimp, and this is true, leaps out of the chair and on to Michael Jackson and bites the tip off of his nose. <laughs> I am like, I love this chimp. I'm, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm on the chimp side. And then, so what happens is uh, Quincy hits his panic button. So all of a sudden the doors open like in a James Bond movie uh, and in comes Latoya and Tito. And they've got these tranquilizer dart guns. So like, da, 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 and, and they start firing these tranquilizer darts. Uh, so, like I said, I bonded with the chimp. I kind of like, I kind of like Troubles the chimp. Uh, so I don't want him to get hit. So it's like, it's like a John Wick film. Like, no, and I'm, I'm, and I'm getting hit with these darts left and right. I'm a little hyper, so it, it takes. They have to keep reloading, and so I think like after thirty or forty of these darts in me, um, I, I just, I felt like taking a nap. Uh, and as I was going under, I started to fall asleep. I could hear Michael going, "I will have my revenge." But it was a little more more nasally. I will have my revenge because you know tip of tip of the nose was gone. So um, what happens is I wake up and and not for the first time I wake up in Venice Beach um, naked again uh, and and I'm covered in newspapers, uh, which is you know it's happened before. Uh, and so I I look in the paper just happened to be when I picked up and I find out that Michael just out of spite had outbid me for the Titan missile. I outbid everybody. I wasn't there to bid. I would probably been the only one. Uh, he outbid everybody, uh, got the Titan missile, and he gave it to the Russians. Okay, on, on, on the caveat that they would shoot troubles into space. So yeah, I, again, I didn't, I didn't get my Titan missile. I still feel like my house is unprotected. Uh, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do if somebody breaks in. Uh, you know, I don't have a missile to protect myself. But um, the thing is, that was the last time I ever worked with Quincy Jones, never heard from him again. Um, I never heard from Michael again. But I did strike up a, a pretty good friendship with Bubbles the Chimp, who did return to Earth. Uh, every year, Bubbles the Chimp sends me a lovely Christmas card. I hope you can see this. Uh, and then uh, inside, uh, what he's done is he has uh, um, he's smeared his own feces on there. Uh, trying to write, uh, uh, trying to write Merry Christmas. Yeah, it's it's not good. I don't know if you, I'm hoping you can see that. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, you know, what you want? He's a chimp. 